So one of the first questions he had to answer is what is happiness? And that he quickly redefined to what is well-being. So in this model, this is kind of like the popular psychology version, again, the better story over the better theory. Um, we're first going to look at this version by Tony C, and I'm going to expand on it a little bit. Um, because what he was looking at is like, what types of happiness are there? What he found out in the for earlier research three, later five, there are three types of happiness. And the lowest form of happiness is rock star happiness. And rock star happiness is that I get what I want. So I want more money, I get more money, now I'm happy. Now I want a new car, I get a new car, now I'm happy. Um, I want a new house, I get a new house, now I'm happy. It's two problems with rock star happiness. One is um, it doesn't last very long. Uh, they've proven it over and over again with people wanting the, winning the lottery. Winning the lottery, within eight months, you're back to the same baseline happiness that you had before you won the lottery. Regardless how much money you won, regardless what you did with it, on average, within eight months, you have the same amount of happiness. I see some of you thinking, give me the money, I'll show you a better return. <laughs> but trust me, within eight months, same level of happiness. And the second problem is um, happiness inflation occurs. What was at one point enough to make you happy probably won't be enough later on. And if you doubt that, think about your first paycheck. How much work you had to do and how much money you got and how happy you were. And now imagining, imagine doing the same amount of work, getting the same amount of money. And if you're going to be equally happy as the time you got it the first time. Probably not. So now you need maybe three times or maybe even ten times as much money for exactly the same happiness. And Actually, the tricky thing is that in our society is built around this, around rockstar happiness. And it's actually built around the idea that there will be one day where you will truly have everything you will ever, you've ever wanted and then you will be permanently happy. And that day will come, the day you have everything you ever thought you wanted. And that day is called the beginning of your midlife Christ. <laughs> because then you have everything you ever wanted and you're like, where is my happiness? I should have my happiness now. And well, of course, you've got like the guy solution, right? Red sports car, new, new girlfriend. <laughs> but yeah, eight months later, <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really help, right? So you have to go for a higher level of happiness. You have to find it somewhere else. So you go for passion, flow and engagement. Uh, it's a Hungarian researcher, Mihaly Csikszent Mihaly, beautiful name. Uh, we're going to test you afterwards if you can spell it. Uh, but he, um, he looked at flow and he looked initially at uh, athletes and later on more people. Like how is it that some people put under extreme pressure and stress actually thrive? They forget about time, they forget to eat, they forget everything because they're so involved in what they're doing. And what do you need for that? An appropriate challenge level, because if it's too hard, you get frustrated. If it's too easy, you get bored. And it should be a subject matter you're interested in. And if those two come together, then you can get into flow. And the cool thing is you can do this your entire life. You can be 70 and get into flow. And the recipe is always the same. You don't need more of something or it doesn't need to be more expensive or bigger. As long as you're doing stuff in an area you're interested at a decent challenge level, then you will get into flow. The highest level of happiness is higher purpose or meaning. When you get to the point that um, you really know why you're doing something and what the value of it is. Um, teachers don't always experience rockstar happiness when they look at the paycheck. <laughs> um, doing, you know, <laughs> correcting work and stuff like that doesn't necessarily engage flow. But sometimes you've got like a group of students or even one student where you truly made a difference. Where you're like, if I hadn't been there, he wouldn't have made it, but because of what I did, he's got a different future. Or he got into the university he wanted to, or he, he, I changed something about somebody's life. And that can keep you going for months, regardless of how little rocks or happiness or flow you experience. So meaning is really important.